All right, so here we've looked at one of the uh, main languages to make a modern website. There's, of course, still much more to learn. I'm going to show you a website a little bit later where you can continue learning. But here we've looked at a little bit of HTML. Basically, HTML is to build the structure of the website and to add some content. So we've got HTML. Then, okay, well, what about if I want this to look a little nicer? I, I'm, I'm tired of just simple black and white. We have that purple color there, maybe. I want to change some of the other colors. I want to make something more interesting. That's when CSS comes in. HTML is hypertext markup language. It was invented in 1989. And CSS, cascading style sheets, were invented in around 1996, 20 years ago. And so um, CSS was then invented a few years later to make the web look nice. There had been ways to do it before, but then the standard, this web language, CSS, came about to make it look nice and to be, you know, standardized. So there's many ways to do this, and if you've got some experience, you might already be um, doing what I've already done here and advanced or whatever. When we talk about CSS, there's also different ways to do this, but we'll do it the most basic, most obvious way, which is an inline style sheet. Basically, we're going to change the, the default look of things. Right now, the body tag has a default. White background, black text. The H1 tag has a default. You know, bold text with like 12 point size or whatever. It has a default look. We're going to override, we're going to change the defaults by applying some CSS directly here. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to change the body. We're going to add a new attribute. We're going to change the style of body. So go back to where you've got the body tag. Put your mouse right after the Y so that you're inside of the tag and press space. So make sure you're in the, you're between the Y and the angle bracket. We're going to add another attribute. Like we added source attribute to image, href attribute to anchor link. Um, we're going to add an attribute to body. And specifically, this one is the attribute style equals quote, end quote. Are you seeing this syntax? Are you seeing this happening over and over? That we have some tag and then some attribute equals quotes. Tag attribute equals. Tag attribute equals. Tag attribute equals. Same sort of thing. But this time we're going to add CSS. We're going to change the style. And here there's a list of like 200 things you can do, and I'll show you the link, of course. But one of the basic things I want to do here is inside the quotes, let's write background dash color. We're about to change the background color of the body. The default body is white. And here I'm saying background dash color colon. So colon is shift colon. It's right next to the L on the keyboard. So colon, space, and here we can pick a color. Let's make it easy. Let's pick pink, semicolon. I often choose pink because if you know how to type, you can type pink with one hand. I guess you can also type red. But pink. And then notice semicolon. So notice the way it's written. That's the way it has to be written. Some sort of property that we're changing, background color. How are we changing it? We're making it pink. And this is an attribute style of the body tag. Let's save it. Double click it to view it. Look at that. Beautiful shade of Pepto Bismol. <laughs> okay, maybe you're not into pink. What about other colors? Can you think of any other colors? What if you go back and change pink to something else? Let's try blue. Go back and type BLU. Change it from pink to blue. We get a nice eye burning shade of blue. Okay, what about other colors? Any other colors you like? Gray. Gray. Now, would that be G A R A or G E Y? Let's try gray. We get a very nice shade of gray. So, try a few different colors. Can you find a color that doesn't work? Let's try yellow. Yellow works. How about those colors that are like a combination, like blue green? 
you can do um, some like that that are combinations. Uh, if it doesn't work, it's going to do nothing and go back to default. Um, let's see, we don't use dashes on those. No. So blue green doesn't seem to work. You, well, notice at a certain point we're going to run out of color words. We'll show, I'll show you in a moment a different way to show colors if it's not, if it's not a word that exists. But there's a lot of these. There's purple. There's purple. There's um, gold. You can do gold. It doesn't sparkle. There's gold. Silver. There's also silver. Not sliver. Silver. That's silver. Looks like gray, but it's silver. Well, gold, silver. Is there bronze? Nope. There's a list of about like 140 something of them. 140 something named colors like that. And at a certain point, you'll run out of a color. But there's some really weird colors in here, such as bisque. What's bisque? I thought bisque was a soup. It is. Here's bisque. It's like a beige, peach kind of color. There's some weird ones too. There's Alice Blue. Do Alice Blue? There is a very light blue. See that? Is it trying to go after Alice in Wonderland? Possibly, yeah. So there's some weird colors. What's that? We can do that too. We'll do that right now. So. Okay, let's say we want the perfect, the perfect blue-green color, like my logo, but I don't have blue-green. So what we can do is a couple of ways we can mix colors. One way is like this. Let's instead of putting a word, let's type right here, R G B, open and close parentheses. We're going to mix a color via red, green, and blue, just like when you mix paints. A little bit of. Uh, you know, yellow and blue makes green. We're going to mix colors. We're here, we're going to mix red, green, and blue. So let's try this. Let's try uh, 25, comma, 25, comma, 100. So I'm putting in 25 units of red, 25 units of green, 20, and 100 units of blue. I'm mixing those three colors, RGB. I don't know what color that'll be, but let's, let's see. I'm going to save it. Check it, and it's an interesting kind of like bluish, purple-ish. Let's see. Let's try 25, 25, 200. It's a different shade of blue. Uh, you have between zero and 255. So what if I do 250, 25, 100? Not quite red, not quite pink, not quite you know neon pink. It's it's a shade. It's got a lot of red, very little green, medium blue. Goes from zero to two fifty five. Mm. What about if you put zero zero zero? It's all black. Zero, no no amount of red. Zero, no amount of green. Zero, no amount of blue. No colors is black. What's, what's the opposite? If I go with full blue, full green, full red, what color is that? White. So this is mixing colors of light, not like paint, where you mix all the colors and you get brown with paint. You mix all the colors and you get white, because this is mixing light, colors of light, not colors of paint. Um, but anyway, all the colors pure white. And um, you don't have to do this, but then the other kind of way to mix colors here is through hexadecimal. I mean, you don't have to do this, but you can also write pound f f uh, two two um, ee. And that is another kind of purplish. This is just another way to mix the colors. This is also red, green, blue, but it's a different formula. Don't quite worry about it. 
but there's another way to mix colors. Basically, if you design a color in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever, it'll give you the color formula, either in RGB or this, which is hexadecimal, and that's how you can have your perfect color. If I just do red, and this is the Coca-Cola website, that's not the quite Coca-Cola red. I might have to mix it, you know, whatever their formula is, 255, a touch of green, and a smidgen of blue. Slightly different. So CSS is a way to change various defaults of our site. Let's say we want to pick the coolest color. Whenever people learn this, they pick the coolest color, which is black. And I've got a cool website. Now I can't read the text. Black text on a black background. So now we need to change the color of the text. Background color black. Well, it would make sense here. Let's change the text color. We can add more. We can add more styles. We've added a background color. Everything between background color to the semicolon is like one command, kind of. And we're saying make the background color black. So after the semicolon, but before the end of the quote, add a space. And now we're going to change the text color. And it would have made great sense when they were inventing this to call this text color. But no one had that great idea. They just called it color. Color means text color. So look at that. Background color black, text color white. Or any combination. Try that. Background color, text color. So just type color, not text color. It won't work. If the code doesn't work, best case scenario, nothing happens. Worst case scenario, smoke comes out of your computer. Uh, no, I mean it just won't work. There is actually a color, something like white smoke or gray smoke, something like that. There is a, a named color like that. But here, okay, now it didn't change the color of my link right here because that needs to be edited in a different way. But here I'm showing you that you can change background and text colors. So choose any ones you want. I'm going to go with um, pink background and white and uh, brown text. Kind of a cool combination. So any colors. Was everyone able to change some colors like this here? And this is CSS. We added CSS. We changed the default behavior of our, of our whole document because we added style to the body. But we can add style actually to anything. We can add style to the heading one, to the image, to the paragraph, just about anything. So let's play with this. Let's say we also want to add CSS. We want to add style to heading one. We can target just heading one to change. So let's go down here to heading one. Add a space right there. We're going to add the style attribute to h1. And we'll do the same thing. You pick your colors, but we'll do the same thing. Background color and text color. Different colors. Let's say I'll do color this time of um, background color of um, gold semicolon, because you separate each thing you're changing, each thing you're affecting with a semicolon. So the heading one background color <coughs> would be gold, and my text color will be, uh, let's see, gold might look good with um, black. So I'll do color black semicolon. We separate each one of these CSS statements with a semicolon, and we have a regular colon in between the property and the value. Look at that.
So I would say, I guess after this amount of experience, I would say HTML is easy, CSS is not so easy, and JavaScript is hard. Those would be the orders of things that I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes um, you would think it's a very easy fix in one or the other language, and it's actually harder. And then sometimes you think it's going to be hard, but then it's actually easy. I'll show you an example of that. Something that you would think is hard, but it's actually super easy. In the old days, let's say I wanted to, so in the ancient days of the internet, five years ago, I wanted to add a drop shadow to that picture. I would open Photoshop, add a drop shadow, save it, load it on my website. Then the boss said, more drop shadow. So I go back to Photoshop, I edit it, put it back on the web, done. And the boss says, okay, actually put the drop shadow at the other angle. Go back to Photoshop, edit it, put it back on the web. We can do drop shadows now with one little line of code. And we'll do that right now to the image. This image here. So let's go to our image tag. We've got the image tag, the source attribute. <clears throat> now we'll add the style attribute. So after source, after the quote there, in the image tag, let's style again. So the same syntax, style equals quote, end quote. We're about to add some style to the image. And we're going to add the latest and the greatest version of CSS. This is CSS3. We were currently writing CSS2. 2.1, and now we're going to add some CSS3, some newer code. That means not every web browser will understand it, but we'll see how we do here. This one is called uh, border-radius colon. Um, it doesn't quite make sense. Why is it called this? Wait, what am I talking about? Drop shadow. We're doing a drop shadow, not a border radius. That's later. That's later. We want box shadow. That's what I meant. Border radius is something else. Box shadow. Okay, that kind of makes sense. I'm going to add a shadow to a box. A picture. And this requires that we add a few values here. Background color, we have one value. Pink. Text color, we have one value. Brown. Box shadow needs a few a few ones. Let's type this first and then I'll explain what it means. We'll type 5px, notice there's no space there, 5px, now space, 5px again, space, 5px again, space, and then black. I'll explain what it means in a moment. Type it, save it, check it in the browser, see what you get. So if it worked, it should look something like this. Drop shadow. What is happening is the first value is um, the first value, the first two values are how moved over is the is the shadow. Because here in the real world, look at my hand, I've got a shadow behind my hand. If I move close to the projector here, the shadow is at a certain position. As I move farther away, it moves over two, right? So the first two values there are that, the x and y. The first value is x. Move the shadow five pixels to the right. And then 5px, move the shadow five pixels down. And there it is. So if we change the first value, let's say 25. Look at how much more to the right it moved. Instead of going back to Photoshop, <coughs> designing it again, saving it as a transparent GIF or ping, here just one little change. 25px moves it 25 pixels to the right. And it might not make sense, but if I put 25, well let's make it obvious, uh, 45 for the second value. 
It might not be obvious, but I'm going to move it down 45 pixels. You might think, well, 45 it goes higher, why isn't it moving it higher? Well, that's simply because it's x and y coordinates starting from the top left. 25 pixels to the right goes to the right, and 45 pixels from the top moves down 45 pixels. So if I wanted to move this up, if I wanted the drop shadow above the picture, what would I change that value to? Negative 45, minus 45. And now minus 45 moves it up. Because we're starting at the picture, 45 more pixels on the y coordinate, which is up and down, is down. Negative 45 is up, away from it. Let me put it back a little bit more. Just 10. 10 and 10. The third value is how blurry is the shadow. Because when my hand is close to the screen, it's pretty sharp shadow. As I move further away, it's getting blurrier and blurrier. So the third value is how blurry. What about if I put 25 pixels of blur? It's going to look like that, look at very blurry. If I put one pixel, <coughs> question? One pixel, very sharp. So we've got x, we've got y, we've got blurriness. Well, we'll change that color of black to see what happens with that value. All right, so um, what we did right here was we've played with a, with a drop shadow, um, and if you change that fourth value, that's the color, because since this is digital, you can have um, drop shadows of different colors. And here, if I put red, you've got this little red drop shadow. So look at this trick. What if I do zero pixels, zero pixels, five pixels, you get like a, a glowing, no, 25 pixels, you get like a glowing picture. Zero, zero, so we're not moving it to the right or the left, or up or down, we're keeping it right on the center of the picture, and then we're doing 25 pixels of blur, and technically we don't put any values here, we just say zero, zero, 25px. Pixels, those are the dots, how many dots, how many pixels, so here's a little blur. The very, very last thing we'll do as we wrap up the class is then let's touch on JavaScript. JavaScript, that's the one that I said is hard. That's the one that's often the third thing, the third language for a website. HTML is for the structure and content. CSS is for the design. Remember how boring this looked a few minutes ago? Now we've got colors. And JavaScript is for the interactivity. Question. What about PHP? 
PHP would be related to JavaScript in that it would do the interactivity of things, but just a different way to accomplish the same thing, sort of, in, to some degree. So interactivity, such as clicking a button to log in, such as hovering your mouse over something and something pops up. Um, JavaScript can be pretty complex because it can do a lot and PHP is related, and CGI, and what else, Ruby, and all of that. So um, lots of ways to do this. But let's say what we want to do is, um, let's do this very basic like this. Let's say we're going to have some text right below here that says, Welcome. And when you click the word Welcome, it'll pop up to say your name. That's the interactivity, and that's going to be JavaScript. So here's how we'll do it. Um, after, after the link, so we've got this p tag, which is the link. After that p tag, let's add another p tag. And one of the things is that p tags do not have a number. You might think, well, I'll make that one p2. No, there's just p for paragraph. There's h1 and h2 and such. But those are the only ones that have a number. Everything else is just the tag. And here it's going to make a brand new paragraph. And in the paragraph, it doesn't technically have to be a paragraph, like three sentences. One word is technically a paragraph. We've marked it as a paragraph. So let's create a new paragraph. It'll say welcome. And if we check it on the web, it says welcome. Notice it's that it's that brown color that I chose previously. It automatically inherited that um, color that I chose up here. On the body, I had said make the background color pink and the text color brown. And so way down here, it, it obeyed it and it made it brown. And now let's say I want to click on the word welcome and I get a pop-up that says something. There's lots of ways to say it. Here's one of the most basic ways. We're going to go back to the P tag. We're going to add another attribute. Go back to P, space. We'll type on click equals quote end quote. This attribute relates to JavaScript. And what this will do is when you click this paragraph, make it do something. And of course there's many ways to write this, but here's one way. Inside the quotes then, we will write this JavaScript command, alert, open and close parentheses. And in this JavaScript command, we can make it say whatever we want in single quotes type your name. So, try that. Save it. Make sure here be careful about these quotes. We have double quotes around the whole on-click attribute. We have single quotes around John Smith. If you put double quotes everywhere here, it won't work. <clears throat> Try that. Check your, your code, your spelling. Save it, and try clicking on the word welcome to get a pop-up. On click. So if it works, it should look like this. You click on welcome, pop-up, John Smith. And so this looks different. Alert and then parentheses. This is one of the dozens, hundreds of JavaScript commands. And JavaScript is so complex you can invent your own commands. Um, and so just for fun, let's do one more thing here. Instead of it saying alert John Smith, let's try this. Let's have it say prompt. And instead of John Smith, 
Let's make it say login. Check that out. On click. So it's still the on click. It's still going to be some JavaScript. But now I've changed the JavaScript command from alert, which just made a very basic pop up box. I changed it to prompt with a different message. Save it and run it. What's the result? Is that where they get like if you click on all the it could. It could definitely. You can write uh, the right kind of JavaScript to do that, that you're going to leave and it's going to say, don't forget to sign up or whatever. So yeah, JavaScript can be used for good or for evil because have you ever been to a website where suddenly a lot of pop-ups appear? That's probably JavaScript also. But here, if you used prompt, it popped up here. Log in. Great, I'm going to log in and put my name. Now, I won't do anything besides that, because that's when we get more complex. Capture that name, check the password, log you in, show you cool stuff, whatever. But this is the tip of the tip of the iceberg of JavaScript, interactivity. We had something that we can click on that it asked you for your username, and then after that we would then write another hundred more lines or thousand more lines to make it do complex stuff. So instead of prompt, you know, where you can also just write a script to login, something like that. Command. Well, right here we made it say login, and we can make it say whatever we want. We can make it say welcome, please sign in. We can make that say anything else because that's just HTML. But the part that's the actual JavaScript with this pop up here is the prompt. So we can, of course, get more complex because this doesn't do anything. I click OK and great, nothing happens. The data just flies away, nothing happens. We would get more complex to make it say, Victor logged in, here's your, your daily news. But here in this one document, you know, about 15 lines of code or so, we've got HTML, we've got CSS, we've got JavaScript. And we can get much more complex, but what I'll leave you with it's on the homework, but I'll show it to you right now here. If you want to go to the web and go to w3schools.com, this is one of many websites out there where you can learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, as well as other languages. These guys have been around a long time, probably you know, 10, 15 years or so. They've been around a while. w3schools.com. And on the left side it says, learn HTML, learn CSS, learn the colors, learn JavaScript, and all this other cool stuff, jQuery Mobile, uh, PHP, ASP. And the cool thing is that you can go through these lessons, there'll be this try it yourself, and it'll say, okay, here's the code, make some change, there's the result. And when you go through the lessons, then there'll be quizzes. You pass the quizzes and you get a certificate. Um, not quite sure the value, like I don't think these certificates compare to Southwestern College certificates, but it is some valuable knowledge and you get certificates and that sort of thing. And here's a way, here's a place to learn more HTML, CSS, JavaScript. There's plenty of other ones out there too. You can even learn a lot on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and search how to use HTML or whatever. And people make tutorials out there for free. Lots of places to learn. But today's activity that we did, you can, you can uh, save this or not, but if you save this, you're very close to completing the homework. The first homework is going to be to create a kind of a web page like this. So if you go back to Blackboard, the homework is available. If you go to Blackboard, you go to Assignments. Again, you don't print it just yet. The printer is noisy. But if you go to the Assignments section of Blackboard, there's the first assignment. It's going to be due a week from today at 11 p.m. All the assignments usually are going to be due at 11 which means that you can come to class and usually we're not going to go all the way to the wire like we did today. Usually we will have some lab time at the end of the day, but this is due a week from today. There's the link to W3Schools. What you have to do 
you have to create a one-page HTML document where you create some headings for your early life, today and the future. This is going to be a little quick basic autobiographical web page. You're going to create a document divided into three sections with headings. Early life, today, the future. And in each one of those sections you're going to write a simple paragraph about what was your early life like? What is your life like today? What would you like your life to be like in the future? Add one image, any image that you want. Add one link, <coughs> at least one link, like to your favorite website, whatever. Use CSS to change the background color of the document. Use CSS to change the color of a paragraph of text, so not everything, at least one paragraph. Use JavaScript make something clickable and have it show an alert box with any text. So very similar to what we did today, but now you have to expand upon it a little bit. So if you take what we did today and just add to it, you're like this close to finishing the assignment. Or you can start all over. And I've recorded all of this. I'm going to put it online before I go home. Send me an email and I'll send you the videos. You can watch this again to uh, practice what you missed. Or you go back to W3 Schools. You're going to save this with your last name .html, and you're going to send it to me via email. So you can go to your Hotmail, your Gmail, you can go into Blackboard. There's a link in Blackboard. Send the email to me, and please put this subject. I teach more than one class. I don't want your email to get lost. Put that subject. It's worth 10 points. 11 p.m. next Wednesday. That's the first assignment. Any questions? Okay, we'll have a little bit more lab time. Class is officially over, but I'll be here until 9, I guess. And uh, answering any questions, thank you for coming. Um, we'll do it again next time.